of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. understand. 
And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. As for the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it. For he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people. Their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep. For all the people were weeping, as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allow a lot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to that body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Then mighty deeds. Then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord.
Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately and new, to write it down in an, order, in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading today that comes from chapter 8 of the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, we're given this instruction at the end of that first reading. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. We hear that today is a day consecrated to the Lord our God. So because it's a day consecrated to God, we have reason to celebrate. Every day, as Christian people, should be consecrated to God. Every day is worthy of celebration. In these times, since Christ won eternal salvation for us through his cross. We always have reason to rejoice and to celebrate. After all, he has made us members of his body, and we have an important part, a role in fulfilling his complete plan of salvation that he has for the world, even though he has accomplished salvation through his cross and resurrection. He invites all of us to share in the church's mission, which is meant to communicate and share that gift of salvation that he won for us with everyone he puts in our path. We are inheritors of the gift of salvation, and we are participants in his plan. We always have reason to rejoice and celebrate. However, there are so many Christians in the world who are not joyful, who are not celebrating. There are many Christians who are sad, and they appear as if they have something that stifles their capacity to rejoice. While there are many reasons that a Christian is not able to rejoice as he or she ought to, there is a common reason that we see many times in the world that impedes our joy. And it's a condition that we really do have the power to change. And what I'm talking about is our human guilt. While guilt can be a positive instrument that God uses to make us return to his ways after we sin, frequently we develop what I call an addiction to guilt, to unhealthy guilt. Sometimes we have the idea that we have sinned so bravely or we've sinned so much 
that were beyond God's forgiveness. Now that is foolish to me. God, Jesus forgave the um, thief, the, the repentant thief on the cross in his last moments of life. If Judas Iscariot had confessed to Jesus what he had done and had sincerely re repented, he would have been forgiven. There is no sin that we confess that can't be forgiven if we have true contrition and strive to avoid that sin in the future. He sent his son to forgive all the sins of every person in the world, including those of you and me. Our God is indeed a God of mercy. Now, when we make a sincere confession, the priest tells us <coughs> that our sins are forgiven, and they are indeed truly forgiven. This is the reason that Jesus appeared to his apostles the night after he rose from the dead, in order to breathe the Holy Spirit upon them and to give them the authority to forgive the sins of other people who would in the future confess sins to them. When he gave the apostles this authority for forgiving sin, the tradition of the church teaches us that he made it so that his successors of the apostles would have the same authority to forgive people of their sins. Jesus made the sacrament of reconciliation, or as we frequently call it, the sacrament of confession, in order to continue his ministry of mercy here on earth long after he ascended into heaven. Every priest, every bishop is a direct successor of the apostles, and the priests share in the bishop's ministry. And through the sacrament of holy orders, we receive the same authority that Jesus gave to his apostles that night. He said to them, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. Now in today's gospel, Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah that God has anointed him in order to bring good news to the poor, in order to announce liberty to captives, healing of the blind, and to give liberty to the oppressed and to proclaim a year that is acceptable to the Lord. In Spanish it says, a year of grace from the Lord. Through confession, we receive freedom, we receive liberation when we when we receive absolution of our sins through the sacrament of reconciliation through a priest, we are able to live freely, if, even if we were flayed with guilt before. We are able to put all that guilt in the trash can, and we should keep it there. There is no sin so great that God cannot forgive, but we have to have resolution to avoid the sin in the future, and we have to make the necessary changes in our lives to avoid the sins that we have sincerely confessed. I want to lead towards the end of my homily by speaking about two sins that exist or commonplace in our world today that cause a great deal of pain and suffering for the world. They are sins that we need to pray to come to an end soon. And they are sins that, again, we can work to change. The first one that I'm talking about is division. We live in an incredibly divided world. And what did that second reading tell us? It's a continuation of the second reading from last week that I preached about, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul talks to the Corinthians about the different charisms of the Holy Spirit, the ministry gifts of the Spirit, that equip us with, with Holy Spirit power to go out and minister to other people. And as Kathy read to us tonight, the different gifts, not everybody gets the same gifts, 
And the gifts are meant to be used so that we operate as a body. And that we operate as a unitive body, a body that loves one another, so that we can be effective witnesses of Jesus' love and mercy in a world that needs it more than ever. But when we're divided amongst ourselves, how can we truly live as the body of Christ? <clears throat> we see division because of politics. We see divisions because of all kinds of reasons. And unfortunately, we see division in the church. We see division <coughs> among Catholics. And something else that I truly believe breaks Jesus' heart is the great division between all of the different denominations within the greater body of Christ. All of us have to discover the gifts that God wants us to have so that the church can function at its maximum capacity. And as I mentioned last week, and I'm going to mention again, I have something called the spirit, the Catholic spiritual gifts inventory that I want to pass out to as many people so that we can collectively discern what our gifts are and discern how is calling us to serve him. But yet the body of Christ today is much weaker than it should be because there exist so many divisions among our members. It was never Jesus' plan that we have thousands, and I mean thousands. I've seen statistics saying that there are something like 40,000 different Christian denominations that exist today. Jesus founded one church upon the rock of Peter. And he wants that all of his believers live as true brothers and sisters in the unity of one church. It means that we have to pray. And also that we have to make efforts to know and love other Christians of different denominations so that we find what we have in common and that we pray and work together in order to bring Christ to this world, a world that needs him more than ever. Whether it's to help the poor in our local community, whether it's to, to promote the respect and protection of life, whether it's to support things for the common good in our local area, if we Christians come together to do these things, we are going to fulfill so much more of God's will because there is indeed power in us. We are most weak when we work and pray completely separate. Now another sin that brings a great deal of suffering and guilt that hangs on for years and decades to a lot of people are the sins against human life. Now, getting, before I get into this, this week that we're in right now, from the 18th to the 25th of January, is um, an international week of prayer for Christian unity. And if we were really on the mall, we would be working with the Episcopal Church up the street, the Methodist Church down at the end of the road, and maybe some of these other churches around here, to really have activities and ministries to promote unity in the greater body of Christ. And that's something maybe we can work towards for the uh, week of Christian unity next year. Now, also today, the 22nd of January, uh, our Catholic Church, for many, for the last 49 years, has declared this as a day of penance and prayer for the violations against the dignity of the human person. So every year on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, we have this special day of penance for violations against the dignity of the human person. And it's essential that we, as part of the body of Christ, that we continue to pray, we continue to do acts of penance, and we work for the protection of all life from conception to natural death. It's essential and crucial that we teach our children and our grandchildren uh, that every human life is special. Every human life has a purpose, and we never know what good God is going to bring from that person in the womb, even if 
they were conceived in the most difficult or unplanned circumstances, God can use them, will use them. All of us have the right to live. At the same time as the body of Christ, we have to be people who always show mercy, forgiveness, and compassion to those affected by all sins, especially those against life, or maybe who have possibly done such things in the past. If, um, if you go to our parish website, and our parish website for, for this parish and for perpetual health is on the front of our bulletin, and if you were to go to our Lady of Sorrows website, and you would scroll down and you would see something that says Parish Bulletins. And if you click there and went to last Sunday's bulletin for the 16th of January, you would see in my article information for any person, woman, or a man affected by an unplanned pregnancy. We have a Christian-based pregnancy center in Annapolis that will help anybody who's in that situation. But I also printed information about how to get in touch with Project Rachel, which is a ministry that reaches out to women and to men affected by abortion, even if it was decades ago, for, to get healing and to know that you are, are always loved by God and to work through the healing. And the self-forgiveness sometimes um, affects many people after this. So in conclusion, my brothers and sisters, let's get rid of our guilt from the past. Let's get rid of our divisions within the body of Christ. And let's go to confession to get rid of our personal guilt. And let's do the work that we have to do to be healed from our past. Because Jesus doesn't want us to walk around sad. He wants us to rejoice. Because rejoicing in him must be our strength. God bless you and God bless you. Brothers and sisters, let us stand as we pray. I believe of one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God did not make it, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us bring our intentions before the Lord, who through the Spirit anoints us with joy. Our response to each petition will be, Lord, hear our prayer. church will act as disciples of truth and justice for all people. In your mercy. Lord, your that prisoners and captives will find renewed spirit and liberty in the Lord. In your mercy. Lord, your that our parish community will work for the afflicted and bring the good news to the poor. 
in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the word of God, those who don't know Christ will be shown the joy of God's abundant blessings. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will guide those working for peace and speed the day when all emergency and military personnel may return safely to their families. In your mercy. Lord, in your prayer. That the sick will find a renewed spirit through God's perfect word of life, including those listed in our bulletin, and Kathy McMullen, Bina Faith, Ed Modlin, Claire Lind, Dolores Maradaccio, Chris Turner, and Nelly Velasco. In your mercy, that all who have died will be called to eternal freedom with Christ, including Father Francis Russo. In your mercy,
hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be the safety. Ministers of the Eucharist taking communion in the sick. And those on this side, if you would please come to the middle of the church.
first of all, I want to say thank you, especially to um, uh, Nick and Mike Renzi, as well as Dave, David Thames, Matt Noble, Paige Nagel, for taking down the Christmas decorations this week. They were beautiful, but it was time for them to say goodbye in the next December, so thank you for your hard work. Also, the office is taking up, is taking sign-ups for uh, third grade or older students who are interested in becoming altar servers. Thank you, Giselle, but we're going to get you some helpers. <laughs> so uh, pray that they come out. We will hold a training as soon as we get some, some new kids. And I'd also like to do a review for our experienced altar servers because each mass is a little different. And so I want us to kind of be on, on the same page. So when we do have the training, it will be for experienced ones too. Uh, Cardinal Hickey Academy in Owings has an open house the week of January 30th if you are interested in having your children attend Catholic school. Look in the bulletin this week for details on activities that the Women's Guild is hosting the Mary's Garden Memorial Brick Pathway, and also they have Chili Fest orders. We have Chili Fest for Takeout Chili on Super Bowl Sunday, February 13th. Also, we have flyers for Our Lady of Perpetual Helps, um, part of the parish raffle in February, and for the Haiti Bull Roast, and there's a lot more in the bulletin, so read your bulletin. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. Closing in today is the five shall be free to gather both all creatures of our God and King. Number five, two, three.